Hello, good morning to those on the Pacific Coast and good afternoon to the rest of Americas. I want to thank everybody for your time today in joining me for a brief overview of some of FanBill's brand new products. Uh, for this session, I'm going to introduce our i57A as well as our i55A. Uh, both of those devices, as you can see here uh, on the right hand side, is the indoor station. You know, what is an indoor station, you might ask? What this really is, is, is in essence, a almost a redesigned or repurposed phone that has been optimized for video-based security applications. And what are the big features? I mean, given that video cameras are a huge part of security applications, one of the big things is having a very big monitor, giving everyone a good look and feel on being able to exercise their choice of what cameras to pick, as well as being able to see what's on the other side while coupling it with your classic SIP voice with high definition audio as well as good video to couple with that. So when you look at all of these things we've done, we've actually modified uh, the design to give it more of a contemporary look so that it fits into both residential as well as commercial applications and put in some of the features that we think are, are, are pretty compelling to do that. So this is not our first introduction to the SIP uh, indoor station. This is our second release. And I'll introduce some of those add-ons or the previous legacy products that we still support uh, that may be more fitting for your application if you don't have the need for Android. One of the things that you might see in our uh, part number is that many of the things that follow with an A after it really indicates an Android-based type of application. So with that said, before I start, just do some house cleaning. Uh, for those uh, participants who just joined us, you may be able to download a soft copy of this presentation right from your handout section. So you can go to your handouts in your GoToWebinar client, uh, be able to download that. You'll have a soft copy for yourself where you can just jot notes and do whatever you wanna do. Uh, beyond that, if you do have questions, I do encourage you to put in your questions in the question box. I will go through most of the presentation today and reserve myself to stay on and answer any questions you have at the end of the session, which I'll go ahead and go through the questions and answer each one. If I don't, uh, I'll probably ask for your you know, contact information, which you can chat to me, and I'll be more than happy to follow up and get that going. So with that said, uh, let's go on with this brief introduction. Now, one of the things I wanted to apply is I've added on a new, uh, what I call a conferencing unit that's going to be uh, at the end of this to, that will help in the UC space. We saw a real add-on for this type of application. It'll be a bit of a surprise, but I'll go and bring this on at the end of this application and you'll, you'll, you'll go see it. In fact, this is one of the items that to my surprise is, is sort of a little bit outside of our SIP endpoint concentration, but we think it could bring a lot of value to your um, life as a remote or an on-prem uh, employee or staff. So with that stated, I'm gonna go over some of the product overviews as well as the product design for the 57 as well as the 55A and just provide some application scenarios moving forward. So let's go ahead and get started with the product overview. Now, when you go over both of these devices, uh, these both of these devices is really a second generation release. Uh, we released some indoor stations, I believe a year ago, which really consisted of what we call a Linux-based device that is more dedicated for perhaps a more simpler operation. And what the feedback that we've gotten is that there are a huge number of partners out there that have actually developed their own specific Android-based applications. The questions I get very often are, oh, can you load Teams? Can you load Zoom? I mean, of course you can do all of those things, but similar to those applications, many integration partners that are into specific vertical market segments have developed their own Android interface that bypasses this standard interface and provides their own uh, GUI in essence that that, that interfaces with their end customers. In the case of hospitality, for example, I can encounter many people who, who customize this GUI to ask their guests for additional service, uh, restaurant special, the outdoor weather, local restaurant preferences and things like that, all provided in an outcome. And we provided two separate flavors, both the 57A as well as the 55A. 
The difference between the two is pretty subtle. Uh, the 57A comes with a 10 point display that is really totally solid based. So everything that's run on this device is run through a touch screen device where your flex keys are here. Now we know that touch screens are sort of very subjective in, in how people like to choose. So we developed two products, one with a smaller product that has a large touch screen, but also is also driven by physical keys as well. So we've made more space and, and logic for a physical key application where you can go ahead and see who's at the door, uh, unlock those keys and, and do whatever speed dials or, or functions that you would like, very similar to how you would program uh, the busy keys on, on a phone as well. So similar to the f philosophy that we have, everything that we develop as a soft key, a uh, soft screen here, we also developed a hard key version. This, is, this sort of mirrors our control devices where we have a solid state control IP phone that have hundreds of touch screen buttons, but at the same time, many people also like our X210, which is our you know, over 100 button screen touch that you could have the same operation, but a, with a much smaller uh, design or display case in that scenario. This gives you a quick idea of, of where this thing sits in this whole indoor station platform that we're introducing. What I just talked about is identified as new, but this complements the existing uh, uh, indoor stations called the I-53W as well as the I-52W. The I-53W adds a touch screen as well, but it also gives you a limitation of a much smaller screen with given uh, speed dial touch, you know, touches that you can go ahead and actually call uh, an outside uh, call if you want to, or send a specific key to a, to a particular gate to unlock those gates. Now, in addition to that, it also comes with a physical interface that you can actually program and download these buttons as well. If you don't need a touch screen, you want something far more basic, we have this particular Linux-based one that, that has a straight screen that has just the button offering. And the difference between these two is the size of the screen. This one's the most popular one with the i52W, and that you can go ahead and program what you have on this screen, which you can go ahead and customize, add your specific custom logo during boot up and things like that, and be able to provide uh, but, you know, touch screens to go ahead and, and send whatever keys you have. One of the key operations about all of these things is that they all contain internal Wi-Fi uh, applications so that you can just bring this device in and have it all hooked up to your local network just through Wi-Fi as well. Some of the big compliments on the 55A and 57A is the addition of Bluetooth as well. And the reason why is that many people like to download and stream music, and you can actually download those applications and actually stream music throughout all your rooms in a residential application or stream whatever music that you might have in a business application as well. Not only do these interface well with the Fanville access points, but they also talk with many third party uh, streaming uh, cameras as well. All they do is if they support H.264, which is the VGA codec, you can also display those codecs onto all of these screens that you see here in front of you. So this outlines all of the lines moving forward. Now let's talk a little about the i57A. This is a very capable device, similar to our large screen, which is really a 10.1 screen here, but it contains all of the classic high definition codecs, which supports G72. But if you don't have the bandwidth to do that, this also supports the Opus codec, which would allow it to dynamically support your specific you know, bandwidth while accommodating the maximum number of, of, of calls. How many calls can you put in? It's not necessarily listed here, but all of these units support two SIP accounts. So you can install two different SIP accounts that you can contact either locally or remotely, and you will gain access to this to go ahead and have take control of whatever functions that you want it to do. I'll talk a little bit about the ball interfaces and all that stuff, but this comes wall mounted as well. The devices that I showed that are far more simpler also come with a desk mount application as well because many of our partners found a very simple way to, to apply these things for very simple operations. Instead of having a desk phone, this thing uses far less real estate and could do many of the functions that are more uh, doable on a smaller screen. These are also have a PoE connection, so when you take this apart, it can be powered through a PoE as well and well as support Bluetooth moving forward. The difference between this and the i55A is that it comes with a smaller screen. It comes with a seven inch screen, which is more than appropriate. Now, can you imagine having a 10 inch or a seven inch screen on the desk phones 
what this becomes, it looks like a very big block on your wall that takes up way too much space. Having this flat panel becomes a far more elegant interface, not only from a residential perspective, but also commercial. And it actually comes with uh, dual speakers as well, which is more than enough. So you have, in essence, a full-time speakerphone, so you can go ahead and gauge and answer who's at the door while providing physical interface keys on the 55 and, and to find out who's actually in the front door and provide remote control capability. Now let's talk a little about the design and just focus in on this specific product because the 55 and the 57 really mirror the same things. With this, this really gives you a close-up view and, and what we've done is taken the old 53W, which was white, and kind of gave it a little bit more of a contemporary design. And the idea here is we want to make it very easily wall mountable with either a much larger 10 inch screen or a seven inch screen provided by the I-55. And one of the nice things about it is, is if you walk away from your house or from your office and you come back, these actually contain notifications. Of course, the 57 contains some lamp effects that you might enable that would make the historical uh, applications a little more obvious. But both the 55, as indicated here, as well as the 57, have at least an indicator telling you that something has happened where you can see what history has actually performed here. And Nick, you could actually go ahead and, and, and provide historical things on control ringing, holding, missed calls, or even missing SMS voices, depending on how you want to go ahead and do this. So it couples not only the display, but also the same capabilities that we offer during our SIP uh, phone applications. This is just another uh, driven thing on the 57, all driven by keys where you can access dial outputs. So you can actually have speed dials where you can dial Domino's Pizza or whatever you wanted to do going out or family members or people that you call up very frequently. Other than that, we also have a dedicated unlock key as well as different menus. And you can actually choose what type of video monitoring. Rarely do you go into a place now that only has one camera. You can actually pick this monitor key and you could have a selection full of buttons that will give you the selection of what camera you wanted to sort of monitor for a security perspective. Then also coupled with that, you also have some menu driven things which customizes this thing for your specific application, which I'll talk on future slides. This just mirrors the 57 on the i55, but instead of having the color touchscreen, you're also coupled with, with physical keys as well, which some people find far more desirable than having a touchscreen. Now let's look at the highlight features. All of these things, including the i53 and 52, the white versions, all come with Android 9.0 operating system. This is one of the later operating systems that are offered on these devices, and unfortunately, you know, unlike the PCs, you can't necessarily upgrade the Android operating system. What you get is what you get. And most of the baseline requirements out there require Android 8.0 or above. And the good news is that having adopting Android 9.0 gives you the latest security features as well as adaptability in many of the different applications. But it also supports things like D&D mode, which is something that I'll talk a little bit about. But what this does is if this is in your residence, you don't want this to bother you all the time. So when you have things when you're offline, you can have it passively monitor and provide all the applications without necessarily bothering you when you're going to sleep. You can have this indoors and actually have it operate on a passive one-click door opening. So you could hook, hook it up into uh, an outdoor ringer or actually have it monitor real-time monitoring as well. And then a lot of other features, which sort of makes this all user-friendly that's available in all of the 57 and 55A Android phones. I talked about the Android. I won't necessarily go through this along, but then you can actually adopt a customized Android or adopt something that you can use on, you know, from, a, from an APK uh, perspective. So when you have audio and video calls, you will also support things like H.264 or 1080p uh, video streaming. You could stream on this on our access points or any third party or support any of the access or high definition codecs that are offered through many of the SIP based PBXs out there, whether it's cloud based or, 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 or locally based. Either one, it really doesn't matter. We offer both of those things that are really uh, coupled from our uh, experience in the phone industry that we've coupled it and put it into this flat screen monitor. 
this is just a visual representation of what actually goes on. Here's a case where you have a delivery person outside where you, they can access your specific code. This could be a, a standard keyboard, but this could also be a touchscreen one key, two key, or a dedicated five key on the different lines that we do have. So this is just one of many different selections. The inner person sees who's there. They could either press and access the, the key person, and then the person could just come in and provide access control to your residents or, or in the business, depending on what you want to do. If you notice here, this also contains uh, in our access points, an RFID or, or, or key code access where you can actually swap key codes and you can have that type of access going into your uh, business or residence as well. Again, not talking of our own keys, but we also can interface with a lot of third-party cameras out there. We don't necessarily have any cameras, but we provide the capabilities for these things to stream our camera capabilities as well. I talked about the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities. Wi-Fi gives a very easy access point to your specific network, but being able to support Bluetooth, uh, this is kind of a nice way to be able to uh, stream audio throughout your house. You can actually load on particular applications is one thing that you might want to do from a, a residential perspective, or you might have, you know, Bluetooth operations elsewhere where you have somebody wanting to roam around the office with a headset on where you can go ahead and pick up keys. Not only could it also support uh, wireless applications, but it actually has both input as well as output interfaces. You know, the output, you can actually have it control things like electronic door locks. You can have it store specific key codes that you could send to unlock doors. But as I mentioned earlier, you can go ahead and actually have a lot of door sensors and different sensors that you can actually mark down what alarm is actually going off. So it can provide you with a quick uh, interface to see what's actually going on in the outside world. Now, for those who have just joined us, a lot of people just shared, came in during later part. For those who want a soft copy of this presentation, please go to the handouts and you can download a soft copy of this presentation. One of the things that's really grown in the marketplace is beyond smoke detector, which I think was a breakthrough and that, that really resides in most homes that we live today. But now that you have lots of other sensors, water sensors for, for flooding, even carbon monoxide sensors, you know, to see if people, if carbon monoxide is entering to your home. And when an alarm goes off, people say, what's actually going on? You can have these sensors that are now capable of communicating and telling you which are the sensors that are really going on so you can tell what's actually going on uh, you know, in your household or in your business, depending on what's happening. Again, I talked about the D&D mode. Uh, you don't wanna have this thing going off in the middle of the night, especially if you put this in a guest room or a hospitality situation. This could provide a lot of quiet things and you could dim down the lights depending on how you wanna go ahead and make this function. And this makes it far more easily adaptable to its particular work environment. Application scenarios, obviously this could fit into both the villa, which really could provide these on the indoors and you could interface with many outdoor applications, including transfer of mobile applications. Where at the same time in an apartment, many apartments that I find also very popular in Miami, where you have someone um, stationed downstairs managing all the access into a high rise apartment, that person can use one of our flat screens here that you can actually gain access and provide, you know, access to and from from people entering and leaving while you have these devices going in and out and you can have internal communications with the person at the front lobby seeing who's actually there and who's not there. Same thing with the solution office. This is sort of the push push button reception I was talking about, the X210. If you don't like the touch screen, we typically provide everything in two different flavors. Now, if you don't like a large screen, one of the great things about the capability of our XU phones as well as our new V-series phones is that many of our higher end phones in this family contain an H264 VGA as well. So you can actually monitor all of these cameras You'll see it on a smaller screen, but you could actually see, you could tell whether or not it's a friend or foe at the door and provide access keys through all the different key accesses on our desk phones as well, in addition to a lot of our central management system here. Of course, we do it in the hotel environment where you can provide this as an alternative to many of the different uh, hospitality phones, which we have a concentration as well. And because these are all SIP endpoints, they will go ahead and speak to many of the different applications uh, that we have out there. Now, I, I mentioned that we're going to introduce something brand new that sort of ends the introduction of the segment. But now I want to introduce a new UC device that we have. This is really a palm-based 
uh, device that has been uh, sized to really fit in the palm of your hands. This is a great thing because we see a big void in that many of the laptops that are given away in many businesses provide most of the staffers a medium level to perhaps an economical level laptop, which is great if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one conversation either through Zooms, through Teams, et cetera. And, and yet that's, that's fine, but very often when we go ahead and meet with others, we end up with a small huddle between three, four to five people where everybody has to huddle around one application. And the fallback is many of these laptops are only stuck with one microphone. What this does is it fits in the palm of your hands that could interface with your laptop, either connected through Bluetooth or wired application that gives an omnidirectional 360 degree four microphone that you could just put in the middle of the table that really has been optimized for voice so that people can sit down, take notes and actually concentrate on the meeting and not be distracted by optimizing uh, the location of where you have to sit in order to do that. And coupling this device with its much larger brothers for big rooms, it also comes with its dynamic background noise reduction so that most of the voices that you'll go through is, is really meant to clarify and hear the noise. So all of the technology that's been used to enhance echo cancellation and gain control are all given it to you so that you get the clearest voice possible. This is just a pictorial view of what you're gonna see. And uh, again, these are situations where we have four microphones throughout this device that really fits in the palm of your hands, but each one gives in essence a five meter, or should I say, you know, a 10 to 15 foot uh, radius from the actual device that, that will provide people with a comfortable range and sitting down and speaking so that your voice can be here clearly. This is just a pictorial thing and showing what typically happens in many of the mobile phone applications or this application where people gather around here. You could just put it down and it's really been designed so that you could basically charge and talk all day on a speaker device that fits in the palm of your hands. Why is this important? Because this is important for people that actually travel very often. You don't want something that weighs so much, but has but becomes far more effective than just your mobile phone by itself or perhaps your laptop for a little small gathering operations. Some of the things that we've done to make an enhancement is it also supports NFC connection with uh, Bluetooth or general Bluetooth as well. And one of the nice adaptabilities is that the speaker itself comes with a female USB-C type connector on the device. And here we have it connected to the laptop, but we also include it in the box a USB-C to USB-A type connector. USB-A is still the most popular USB connection out there, but we know that there's a growing faction of USB-Cs. If you have a USB-C type laptop only, then you would need to go out and perhaps purchase a USB-C to USB-C connection, and you should be on your way in a, integrating this uh, enhancement technology to greatly enhance your voice during you know, small Zoom and Teams type uh, conferences moving forward. That's kind of it. I want to talk about, you know, this thing supports uh, eight hours in talk time for one charge, which is good enough for most people. Just kind of plug it in in the middle of the night, you should be able to charge. Uh, I won't go over these details, but this thing is a nice, uh, very, very competitive unit that provides uh, a great unit that will enhance uh, voice applications over any mobile phone that you have access to, uh, giving you all the noise cancellations and many of the things on top of here. Okay, so with that stated, uh, just in the huddle room, which is something that I've mentioned, or actually enhancing in a home application where you can use this on the side of your office, something that you can take home that can greatly enhance your overall experience when you're attending either a one-on-one -on -one call or through conferences. That very much covers uh, most of the applications that I have today uh, through a q and I'm gonna stick around uh, through and address any questions. For those who are not interested in hearing questions, I want to extend an advance thank you for your time in joining me as well. But I'm going to go over some of the questions I have here and see if I could do. Some of the people here is, what is the general availability for both the I-57A and 55A? Uh, they are going into production now in September. In fact, uh, many of our distributors will be filling up. They should have samples as of today. And yet we will be going into volume production at the end of this particular month. Okay, that's one question, awaiting some other questions that we have as well uh, for questions, still awaiting. Um, if you have any general questions, 
Uh, same for the CS30. Yes, in fact, uh, we've actually stocked our distributors with uh, e enough samples to provide people who like to buy one or two for, des for test driving. Uh, in fact, one of the things that we may have done is actually couple some of these speakers in with some promos. I would encourage you to reach out to our distributor network to see what type of promos included the CS30s uh, that, are, that are going out in the market so that you can test one or two of them. So it's the same thing as the IS30. Uh, these things will come along. If you have any questions that you want to address Fanville, uh, feel free to send it to sales at fanville.com, or you could send it to me since I'm, I manage locally here in the States, to Tommy, T-O-M-M-Y dot L-E-E -E at fanville.com, or you could just send it to sales at fanville.com. If you need technical support, I would highly encourage you to go and reach out to support at fanville.com. Some other questions that came up is, uh, can the i31S be used with a non-Fanville desk phone? Yeah, in fact, uh, the the intercoms that we have are all SIP-based type of intercoms. Uh, the i31, uh, I think is the i3, are all SIP-based. So you can actually communicate that with any desk phone that's out there. You know, that's the whole idea of SIP is being able to provide a generic interface so that it would work with not only our phones, but you could also work with many of the other phones. The big difference comes in is when you add a video-based intercom, because then you would need a desk phone that has H.264 that's embedded in it so that you get the maximum resolution, and most of the Fanville desk phones have that type of resolution. Uh, number three, is Fandle planning to attend Ned Sapiens UGM in Florida next month? Yes, in fact, uh, we will be there. Uh, we look forward to attending it. Uh, Ned Sapiens, they are a strategic partner of Fanville, and we will definitely be there. For anybody who wants to attend, we'll be more than happy to meet you there, and I'll show some of these products there as well. Uh, what cameras are supported? Uh, the cameras that are supported are actually any camera uh, that supports streaming H.264 codec. Typically, that's a VGA codec, and you can actually choose which codecs that you actually do on a cameras, but most of the third-party cameras out there. So if you bought a third-party camera, look out there for a codec that supports it, and if it has H.264, you should be able to stream that on our i57 or 55A or any of the others, as well as our desk phones as well. Uh, as far as OnVIF, yes, it, uh, all of the i6s, uh, the, the enhancement actually supports OnVIF communication in terms of it supporting many of the standards that are out there. So the answer is yes. That is all I have so far, okay? Um, I will stay on as long as possible, but now I want to go ahead and bid farewell and thank you very much for your valuable time in going over this brief overview. If you want to do a deep dive, feel free to send me or send to sales at fanville.com a quick one-on-one -on -one, uh, review over Zoom. I'll be more than happy to review your specific implementation. We also have local support here as well, so that uh, if you have a technical support, that's how we differentiate against a lot of the people that we, uh, in essence, compete with. And beyond that, have a great day. It's, I'm going through a heat wave out here, which is going to be over 100. I hope it's a lot cooler where you are. And have a wonderful and stay healthy out there. Look forward to seeing you out on the road. Take care. Bye-bye.